So guys, welcome back to the channel. And today I have another review for you. As you can see, you clicked on the video for that reason. The Moto Edge 2024. Now, this phone for Metro by T-Mobile is actually $299. It is a little bit more expensive if you buy it under Best Buy straight out factory unlocked. But, you know, we're talking about the T-Mobile and the Metro by T-Mobile versions, the affordable ones. So with that being said, there's a lot of things that is good about this phone. There's a lot of things that might be bad to some people. But I feel like, you know what? Let's talk about both of them in this video together to see if it's actually a phone that you want to purchase for yourself or for someone, you know, like a loved one. So let's talk some quick specifications and of course I'll break down each section in a different part like cameras and things like that. So right here we have a 6.6 .6 inch screen. It does support 1080 by 2400 pixels so just keep that in mind. You have dual camera setup on the back right here. Vegan leather. Oh vegan leather. Ooh. Yeah it's real nice. So similar to like the Moto Flip of last year this also has that vegan leather texturized grip. I love using this phone um, without the case. Now, some people will say that it does feel cheap or feels really lightweight, which it does, but also the form factor in the hand feels really, really good. And that's what I noticed. Granted, the screen is slimmed down when you compare it to like a OnePlus or, uh, let me just do this, like an iPhone. You can feel that the iPhone is much wider than this phone. This is a 15 plus, but just keep in mind that, you know, it's a bigger phone, but this is slimmer, obviously to save money. <laughs> Let's not lie about that. They wanted to save some money, but, it's still nice. I think it's really good. But anyway, eight gigs of RAM. You have a Snapdragon 7S Gen 2 processor, and it works very well with the optimization of the phone. And that includes with gaming like Diablo Immortal and Call of Duty. I'll have that in another section for you guys. 5,000 mAh battery. So it's a big battery, similar to majority of Motorola phones out there. 60 watt, I'm sorry, 68 watt fast charging. Unfortunately, the actual charger brick does not come inside of the box along with the phone and i'm going to show you guys something real fast let me pull this over see if i have it in my book bag there we go this is actually the cable that i use not the cable i'm sorry this is the cable the apple cable usb-c to usb-c that i use and this is the 65 watt power brick that i actually use and i get fast charging with it so you don't need a motorola branded cable or cord you can actually just use like a sound core by anchor or something that has 65 watts that'll help with the turbo charging just make sure you check that out first before assuming that it's going to work in addition to that it does have 15 watt wireless charging so it has a bunch of different features that you're going to like but more so let's talk about the screen a little bit so like i said before it does 1080p by 2400 pixels which the aspect ratio is about 20 by 90 uh 402 ppi let me just pet the vegan leather for you guys you know it's a pet it is leather after all uh 90.2 to screen body ratio which is not bad at all it is po led i don't know if i mentioned that before but it's po led hdr 10 plus and it goes up to 1300 nits peak in terms of brightness so this is not a bad device at all i have to honestly say that i was pleasantly surprised about the everyday features of how it works and i'm not a fan of motorola at all i feel like they don't really give you everything that is necessary but this is surprisingly really good now the only downside i can say about the software aspect is that you're only going to get i think three years of uh, security updates and two years worth of software updates but to a person that uses mid-tier phones on a regular basis and high end i don't think that's actually bad because most phones under metro by t-mobile only get one year of os updates and then that's it and people keep those phones for many many years so at least this one gets a couple years so just keep that in mind but yes leather nice phone you even have an action button right here where if you click it uh you have the i put made mine the recorder so i can record conversations and stuff because you know i do voiceovers and stuff on different videos but you have the option of actually changing this button right here to whatever you not whatever you want to be but it does have multiple options i'm not sure if i hold it will it happen here we go you can change it to the play music recorder screen record launch a particular application it's pretty good and that's why i say you know these are basic features now it does have the usb-c on the bottom let me make sure i'm recording this properly there we go it does have the usb-c on the bottom no headphone jack unfortunately your uh slot right here 
for the uh what's it called the sim card is right here nine times out of ten that's going to be set up when you first purchase the phone i believe it does do eSIM. i'm not too sure yes it does it does nano sim and eSIM. no sd card slot unfortunately but it is 256 gigs internally standard so i think you'll be perfectly fine with that so with that being said it's a nice phone i like it i'm actually using it for myself as my daily driver originally i was using a one plus 12r but this has uh louder sounds when it comes to connecting bluetooth for review of products so that's one of the reasons why i basically switched but with that being said let me take a deep breath let's go on to talk about more specifications and features of this device as you know the processor is a snapdragon 7s gen 2 8 gig ram processor and it works very well. Now, for comparison reasons, this right here is the OnePlus 12R, which has a second gen, eighth gen processor with 16 gigs of RAM. How does it fare with gameplay and other things? Well, that's what these videos are playing for on the top of the screen. The gameplay aspect of Call of Duty, I did lower the graphics to medium, and I did put it on, I think the frame rate was on high or very high, which I think is good enough for a majority of players to make sure that it doesn't overheat. Obviously, the higher up the graphics, the higher up the frame rate, the better experience. But for me, it is a phone and I use it for everyday tasks. Even when I have a high end phone, I still lower the frame rate and lower the graphics because I want to make sure that the phone's heat is regulated. It works very well. The only time that it lagged in Call of Duty was when it, the loading screen popped up initially. But outside of that, the game itself, it ran very, very well the way I expected it to. I have the uh, Jawbone controller that I use for all my mobile game needs. And I can honestly say that playing zombies, playing, uh, uh, I normally do team deathmatch and other modes, it works perfectly fine. I hadn't had any lag, I haven't had any delay in movement speeds or anything like that. And if I want to make it move faster, then you up the frame rate and the screen does move quickly with that 144 hertz screen, which I do keep it on auto so that it fluctuates properly without burning out the battery. Now, when it came to Diablo Immortal, uh, I did feel like the graphics was, it, it required a little bit more processing power. I could be wrong about that. Even though it's a smaller game, I did feel like it required more. Um, it ran well. It ran very, very well. As a matter of fact, I had minimal lag in the game itself. There was occasional times where there was like a little skip frame rate where enemy popped up on a screen when it was running toward me and it appeared in front of me. But that even happened with the higher end of phones. That's really all about the network signal also along with the processor but again if you're a gamer and you're a person out there that just wants an affordable phone and you want it to work and you still want to be able to do everything that you want to do within reason in terms of price i think this phone does a very good job of that and might i say that the phone did not get extremely hot it got warm absolutely but it not did not get hot now on this one of these sides, you see me using Canva, not Canva. Uh, it's called UCut. Now, what that application does, and they have it for Apple devices too, is that you're able to take multiple videos and combine them, add music, edit, do features, and you can actually do everything from your phone. So for the people out there that may use ClipChamp or other things on their PC, or someone out there that might use iMovie on their iPhone, UCut to me is the equivalent of all those things. You can pay for it. There is a free edition, which is what I'm currently using for this video because I'm not signed in to all of those features on that phone for, you know, video purposes. I was. You get it. <laughs> but the point is, is that um, there is a full version. that gives you a lot more features. The reason why I swiped out of the screen and then started moving around and swiping up and down and left to right is that with Android devices, you have the ability to multitask so I can actually convert a video while playing Call of Duty or going to a YouTube video or going to anything else. And the phone surprisingly still runs with no lag whatsoever in that regard. Remember, it's using the processor in the background. Now with iPhone devices, if you guys aren't aware of this, it, you have to sit on that screen and let it completely convert before you can go on doing the next thing. Because if you swipe away, it will stop it and then you will have to re-record, not re-record, but re-download uh, uh, whatever it is that you did you have to sit on that screen. This is one of the reasons why I prefer Android because it does multitask. And surprisingly, with this Snapdragon 7S Gen 2 processor, it works very, very well. So outside of the software updates, which is only two years for OS and I believe three years for security updates, I can honestly pleasantly say that this phone works very, very well with everyday tasks. And I think that you, the consumer, actually would like it though i don't suggest buying it for the 500 something dollar price tag from best buy that's a different scenario i don't think it's worth that asking price but if we're talking about metro by t-mobile 299 or if you're porting the phone is probably free or if you're setting up a new line i think the phone is either 99 or 199 one of the two then it's reasonably priced because 
other phones in the same category in the US in terms of carriers don't sell you a better product for the asking price. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're looking for devices in the future. So let's talk a little bit about the cameras of this device before I show you some actual footage of me recording. All right, here the main camera is a 50 megapixel wide angle camera. Uh, the secondary camera is 13 megapixels ultra wide. Now you do have the option for 4K videos that only goes up to 30 frames for 4K, but the 1080p does do 30 to 60 frames. Now, again, some people shoot in 4K because they do edits and videos and things like that. Personally, I do 1080p a lot of the times because uh, it just takes less space on the phone when it comes to converting videos or on the PC, but teach their own. I do wanna say that the cameras aren't bad at all, in my opinion, which I'm gonna show you some footage of the actual videos and some still shots I took while outside. In addition to that, the selfie camera is actually 32 megapixels wide camera. It does have HDR, of course, and unfortunately, it only does 30 frames in 1080p is the highest that it goes. I think you can switch between 720 or not. I'm not too sure, but you do have the option, at least where you have 1080p, 30 frames. It is pretty smooth for the most part. Now, if you're using it under more stressful situations like recording a wedding in the dark or, you know, like more shadowed textures, it does suffer quite a bit. But if you're during the day, you're taking regular photos, family photos, things like that, it should work pretty well. But anyway, you don't have to take my word for it. Let me show you the next section right here, which is going to be just some footage of me actually recording myself walking, looking up and down and things like that. So you can see if there's any type of frame rate dips in the camera itself. Just so you guys know, this phone actually does have some pretty cool features in terms of quality of sound. You have spatial audio, smart audio, music, movie, game, podcast, custom. So similar to like an equalizer for other devices, you can change the full sound and functionality of this phone for all videos, all music and things like that. So I will say tinker around with it and see which one is good for you. But more importantly, how are the speakers on this particular device? So I'm gonna go ahead and play a song for you guys. Now this is a YouTube friendly song. Just keep that in mind because I don't wanna get my video demonetized or anything like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to YouTube Music and I'm gonna play Fire and Ice for you and I'm gonna play Warzone so you can just kind of get a gauge of the quality of the uh, uh, speakerphone. Here we go. Look that up for you so you guys can hear that. not super bass heavy obviously because it is a phone speaker and uh it still sounds good though in my opinion the clarity could be a whole lot better actually let me take this case off maybe that makes a difference i doubt it though So the sound is very, very loud, though it's not very pronounced. Now, I know there are some people out there that have iPhones or Samsung devices, and the quality of the speakerphone itself sounds a whole lot better than this one. But just keep in mind that because this phone is $299 under Metro by T-Mobile or T-Mobile, they're trying to sell you an affordable device that's reasonable. That 
original 500 something dollar price tag is for the suckers that are just motorola fanboys <laughs> but for everyone else that's looking for a deal this isn't bad for the asking price so i do want to play some vocals for you guys so you can hear how that sounds unfortunately i was going to play some youtube videos but uh you know they'll get demonetized or monetization will switch and other entities will get what i'm supposed to get so i'm not letting that happen i'm not crazy now but here we go you hear how it sounds right now what i want to do for you guys i'm going to go to the settings and change it up to like spatial audio so you can hear it there we go that's spatial audio wait for the voices to pop up It's pretty loud. Now, it's smart audio. It's just music. Music. Movie on me, I'm sorry. Game. Podcasting for better speech. So I'm just going to leave it on smart audio. All right, so when you actually buy the phone, it's on smart audio. But I do want you guys to understand that you're not going to really hear the dramatic differences in the sound profiles unless you, you got to wear a pair of headphones. Just got to be honest with you. If you have a pair of Beats or regular earphones, Soundcore, Soundpeats, whatever it is, J-Labs, the better quality the headset, the better quality of music that you're going to get. And you'll be able to actually hear the thumps and basses and spatial audio and the pings and all that stuff that's necessary to really test out the speaker the way it's meant to be. So, But like I said before, for $299, I don't think that this is a bad speaker at all. I think that anyone that purchases this device will actually like it. And I do want to just add one other thing in there. I appreciate what Motorola did in terms of rebranding their devices because their phones normally are extremely boring with zero features. But this right here, it's just the overall experience of using this device, even though it's lesser than my OnePlus in almost every category, like uh, camera, uh, not necessarily battery life. The battery life on this is actually very good, but everything else is worse for the most part. But again, as a consumer, you don't care that some consumers, the average consumer just wants something that will work. They may buy a phone once every two, three years. And I think that this phone will work very well in that regard. In addition to that, insurance is only $3 a month for a Metro by T-Mobile. So, you know, I'll mention that again in the last part of the video for anyone that skipped this part. But the insurance is actually very, very cheap. So just keep that in mind that you'll be able to replace your phone. It's affordable and it won't break the pocket. So that's a good thing in the grand scheme of things. So the question is, is this device actually worth the asking price? Like I said before, if you're buying this under Metro by T-Mobile, this guy right here, yes, it is 1000% worth the asking device. It is probably outside of the S23 FE that they sell, the best device that you can currently buy under Metro by T-Mobile outside of Apple. Remember, I'm not comparing anything to Apple because they have their own ecosystem. But for the rest of us, some of us just want a device that's very affordable. And I don't have anything bad to really say about it whatsoever primarily because of the price tag now if i would have said this if you would have bought this for 500 dollars from motorola oh we have something to talk about <laughs> but outside of that uh, let's get back to the point at hand you have 256 gigs internally you have eight gigs of ram you have a, a second gen 7s processor so it's really really good it does work well 1300 nits brightness for the peak and a bunch of other different features that sound really good you saw the camera aspect of it it's not the best camera in the world obviously but it is high end enough where it you're not going to get choppy photos it looks good in different settings it's a good phone overall right now, this is the part that you need to pay attention to. Now, the regular price of the phone is $299. For Metro people that are upgrading, um, unfortunately, they don't have upgrades anymore for you guys. You just have to pay the regular price for the phone, $299, which $300 is expensive. But to be honest with you, for $300, you might use this phone for the next couple years. I don't think that that's bad. And make sure you get insurance. Also, if you walk into the store and they tell you insurance is $10, they're lying. It's actually different tiers. You can get this on a $3 tier insurance. I'm not sure what the deductible is, but it's probably about 50 bucks or something to replace the phone. It's one of the reasons why I switched to it because all around, I just want to make sure that I'm protected all the time and I don't have to worry about paying this $299 price tag. Now, if you're porting over from a different carrier, the phone is absolutely for free. You don't owe anything on it. You own your phone when you're done. And um, you just pay the first month bill, which is more likely going to be that $75 price tag. You can call customer service and get your bill lowered through customer service. 
they're not going to do that in store but either way it's still a reasonably priced phone and if you're getting a brand new number and you're not porting or anything like that the phone is only 49 dollars now keep in mind i believe this phone originally was 199 when you was it 199 it might have been 199 or 99 dollars. i know last week no not last week i had this phone for a couple of weeks now so I actually got it for $99 and then the first month service and all that stuff for a new number. So I, I paid a little bit more, but it's still reasonable. So you're looking at 49 bucks, 50 bucks, uh, activation fees. If they waive it, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but I'll add activation fee to be safe. So it's like $25, so that's $75 before taxes. Then you're looking at 75 for the plan. So it's about 150 and then taxes, fees, insurance, any case and stuff like that. You'll be walking out under 200 bucks for this phone. Even though the phone is $299, you're also getting your first month of service along with that. And I think that's more than reasonable, especially when you look at the landscape of all the other phones that they offer. They're crap compared to this. As a matter of fact, uh, even if you look at the Moto G Stylus 2024, which I do like that phone, I do like it, but it does have its laggy moments. The camera isn't as good as this. The processor isn't as good. The screen resolution isn't as sharp. It, it doesn't feel as good in the hand like this feels like a pre, not a premium phone but it feels like you're getting a premium experience when you look at the screen and use it and swipe but when you look at the actual body of the phone itself it does look a little cheap but that vegan leather in my opinion makes up for it this is just a solid phone all the way around in addition to that you have that action button which you can change it and do whatever you want with it you know eat your heart out apple you're like making up making features that are already existent into a new thing and charging exuberant prices but that's the only time i'll come at the iphone iphones are pretty good too for the most part yes it's worth the asking price i do like the phone um this is not a paid review. This is the primary phone that I use. I need you guys to understand that when I do reviews, when I use headsets, when I say I use the C30i clips and different stuff, I'm not doing that for review purposes and then going on to the next product. I use these products on a regular basis and that is why I, I stand by saying that the phone is good. Now, in the future, if there's any issues with the software, the processor or software over time, I'm going to report that and I'm gonna let you know what's up. But for right now, this mid, is this midnight blue? It says midnight blue, but to be honest with you, it just looks black to me. Who cares? It's a beautiful phone. Anyway, like and subscribe like always guys, and I will see y'all in the next video. Make sure I'm in the camera. Peace.